a biodiversity paradise tucked into the northern coast of South America, home to some of the most striking life form on the planet with a collage of unrivaled natural splendor. Georgetown, a haven for riotous multitude of birds, home to over 250 different species. We present nature's wealth of life and beauty. This is Wild Guyana. With over 800 species of birds, we are a bird watcher's paradise. Let's experience a display of colors and sounds from a few of our feathered friends which share our beautiful city, Georgetown. The orange-winged parrot has the largest population and are the most widespread Amazonas parrot in Guyana. This is the festive parrot, one of the most unique Amazonas parrot found only in the Orinoco Delta and Georgetown. These red belly macaws stand guard at their nest. This blood-colored woodpecker is endemic to the Guyana Shield and found only on the coast, from Guyana to French Guyana. It is the smallest of the woodpecker found in Guyana. These tropical mockingbirds are cheerfully perched on Coffee's head. This white-tailed Trojan relaxes. This pair of black-neck Arakari investigates a lamppost. This red-head woodpecker is searching for his next meal. Notice his tongue darting in and out of the tiny holes. What a way to get clean. Hovering overhead, this hawk spots its next prey. With expert skill and accuracy, he makes the catch. The tricolor heron makes a catch. This snail hawk is undisturbed by the inclement weather. With accurate precision, he takes a dive. He scores. The striated heron scores too.
We depart Georgetown for Mabaruma. From the bustle of our history-laden capital to the untamed and magnificently unspoiled territory locals call the interior. We fly over the cane fields of Demerara, Parika, and the lush rice fields in the county of Essequibo to our Atlantic coastline. These are flocks of white-faced and black-bellied whistling ducks. They form part of the thousands of birds which inhabit our Atlantic coastline. Their diet consists of paddy from nearby rice fields and fish from the coastline. As our flight continues, what appears to be a pink band is in fact a flock of greater flamingos. These magnificent birds stand four and a half feet tall with a wingspan of five feet. Their life expectancy of 40 years is one of the longest of all birds. Flamingos are the only birds which feed with their heads inverted. They filter algae, tiny crustaceans, and insect larvae from the mud flats and shallow brackish waters next to our coastline. In flight, they reach speeds as much as 35 miles per hour and have been known to fly over 350 miles each night between habitants. This is a flock of scarlet ibis in flight. We fly around the great frigates on our Atlantic coastline. They are known bullies since they chase, harass and steal food from other birds. Leaving the Atlantic coastline, we fly over a flower-scented jungle and the large whiny river to Mabaruma. The main road is lined with large rubber trees. This is the Kissing Rocks. Leaving the village for Imbotero, we proceed along the Aruka and Barima rivers passing Morawana. This is the northernmost house in Guyana, next to the Guyana-Venezuela border. This is Anna Lisa. This flock of scarlet ibis is feeding on small crustaceans. The ingestion of red-colored crabs produces their characteristic scarlet plumage. Here is a view from Anna Lisa's window. It is easy to recognize the vivid scarlet color of these birds against the landscape. Neatly camouflaged in its surrounding is the Bothrops atrox, commonly known as the Labaria. It is one of the deadliest snakes found in Guyana. Its natural habitat is the forest, but finds itself close to humans on farmlands and other areas. The Labaria is rated as the most dangerous snake of Central and South America and causes more human deaths than any other reptile in this region. 
The labaria is an aggressive snake that strikes swiftly. Beware. Leaving Mabaruma, we proceed southwest to the mining village of Imbaimadai. This is the Kurowing River, a tributary of the Mazaruni River. We journey along the rich black water of the Kurowing. Here we are greeted by a hypnotizing natural phenomenon, the Maipuri Falls. When you look that side, you can see Kamakusa Mountain. And one of that rock face, you can see rock painting. The trek up the mountain is difficult. These are ancient rock paintings found in the Kamakusa mountain range south of the Maipuri Falls. This display of art chronicles the lifestyle of an indigenous people who passed this way thousands of years ago. The images painted onto this massive rock face cover an area of about 2,000 square feet and reveal their unique cultural heritage. The scenes of dancing in these highlands indicates a happy people. <music> Leaving Mbaimadai, we venture over pristine rainforest in our Pakaraima mountain range to one of the most incredible waterfalls in the world, Kaichor. This is the highest single drop waterfall in the world. A sheer drop of 741 feet, an exhibition of nature's splendor and power. This frog is enjoying the view. This is the golden frog found only in the Kaichur National Park. This red colored mushroom is conspicuous in its shady surroundings. A burst of orange in a jungle of green. This is the male Guyanian cock of the rock. They display a prominent fan shaped crest. These vigilant birds feed exclusively on fruits, but do not digest the seeds. 
This exotic bird can be found in the rocky tropical rainforest of Arakaichor National Park. Our short stopover in Copenhagen is to visit Liza, a capuchin monkey. Hi, my name is Tracy Pablo. Welcome to Copenhagen. Welcome to Copenhagen. Copenhagen is located in Region 8 in the Pakramas mountain range. You can find a large, huge Copenhagen mountain. This monkey is a native to the tropical rainforest. Liza is quite shy and friendly with its human friend. Monkeys are generally omnivores eating primarily fruits and insects. Liza has a strange fascination for motorbikes. and is always ready for a ride. Leaving Copenhagen, we continue south in the Pakaraima Mountains to Paramakatoi. Here, we will meet the village pet, Edward, a colored pecari. Pecaris are omnivorous, eating a wide range of food. Cassava bread seems to make him happy today. Being pampered and fed at the same time sends Edward into a state of euphoria. He is loving it. This fawn is not so lucky. He will have to find food on his own in the shrubs and grass patches in the village of Paramakatoi. Our flight leaving Paramakatoi is bumpy, passing over rolling savanna hills for Ketu another Amerindian village in our North Pakaraimas. Meandering through the highlands of Kato is the Chiang River. This is Chiang Waterfalls. The sound of rushing water cascading down the rocks is intimidating. In the ensuing turmoil, a purple orchid hangs over the raging waters of the Chiyong Falls undisturbed. Departing Kato, we head southeast to Anai. This is Anai, located in the North Rupununi district. Here we find a porcupine. They inhabit savanna lands and rainforests. Porcupines cannot shoot quills at predators. They shake their body vigorously, as seen here, to dislodge quills, which detach easily in the direction of the threat. New quills grow to replace the ones they lose. Quills have sharp tips 
and overlapping scales that make them difficult to remove when stuck. Being excellent climbers, much of their time is spent in trees eating the bark, fruits, leaves and stems. With this thick coat of needle-like quills, predators will find this meal very difficult to swallow. Getting too close to this engaging quill pig might give you a sharp reminder to keep your distance.